Right. Thank you very much, Adrienne, and thank you, Simone, for the invitation and, and very nice workshop. So as uh, Adrienne was saying, this is one of the many joint talks of this conference. It's going to be joined with Emmanuel Scherzer from the University of Vienna. So the, the broad topic of the, of the talk is going to be around um, convergence of genealogies and branching processes. And so, the, the, so it's, it's going to be a summary of a bunch of work we've been doing with Emmanuel for the last two years. And the basic motivation for, for this work was actually a specific problem from population genetics that Emmanuel will expose, and for which we actually needed to, to develop some kind of approach that seemed to be new and to be uh, quite useful to tackle other questions of convergence of genealogies. And so for the past two years, we've been trying to extract the, the general approach from the specific work that we are doing. And uh, so today uh, we have like two objectives, which are like the two parts of the talk. So the first one, which is going to be my talk, is about the, the general methodology. So I will be talking about uh, convergence of genealogies in general spaces. And uh, the second part of the talk is going to be about some models in which we were actually able to uh, apply successfully this method to prove convergence of genealogies. Okay, and so Emmanuel will provide uh, some examples and I just will be doing uh, uh, the general theory. So wait for Emmanuel's talk if you want some better motivation. Okay, so um, let me start right away with the type of objects that I will be concerned with. So uh, consider a branching process in discrete time in which each individual is endowed with a type. Okay, and so the type is going to be a, an element of some space that I did not buy here. And so, um, so the rules of the process are the following. So you start from a single individual uh, with a given type, and now time is discrete, and at each generation, you have a bunch of individuals, and they will reproduce independently. And so one individual, say, that has some type X, is actually going to be endowed with an independent copy of some random point measure that I denote by capital Xa of x. And so this point measure is nothing but a finite sum of direct masses, and there is going to be one, chi one child per atom of uh, the mass. Okay, that's how we're going to encode the reproduction. And so the, the location of that atom is going to give the type of the child. So for instance, in this example, the individual is going to have capital K of x children, and the types of the children are going to be Xi1 to Xi k. Okay, it's random, it can depend on the type on a very general way. Uh, we put no assumption uh, on, on this uh, measure xi. Okay, so this constructs uh, actually a random tree, which is possibly infinite, as well as for each vertex u of the tree, a random variable x sub u, which is valued in E, and which corresponds to the type assigned to individual u. Okay, so maybe some examples of, uh, of more specific processes. So a very simple example is if you take, if you assume that your set E is made of a single element, then you basically have no type and you recover the well-known Galton-Watson processes. Okay, so now if you have a type space which is finite or maybe discrete, so maybe countable, then this is another very well-known uh, object in the branching world, which are known as multi-type branching processes. Okay, and so maybe a last example, which is less trivial, is if you take your type space to be the Euclidean space, and you assume that your reproduction measure has the following form, which means that if you are located at x, you will give birth to the same number of individuals in distribution, but this distribution is shifted by the location of the parent. And then you recover another well-known object, which, is, which are called branching random walks, and which have attracted a lot of, the, of attention. So I'm just giving those three examples to, to represent that maybe this, this formulation of a branching process is quite general, as it includes a lot of, of objects that have been well studied. And also the fact that we leave the space E uh, generally is going to be very convenient for applications, because we can incorporate a lot of details in the modeling through this type space E. Okay, so now the question that we want to ask about this type of processes is the following. So suppose that you look at your process at some large generation N. So you see a lot of individuals, and what we're interested in is in describing the distribution of types that you see in the population, as well as the genealogy of the population. Okay, and so those two questions actually are tightly connected, because for instance, if you want to understand the correlation between two individuals taken uniformly from your population, then typically you need to understand how much time it takes to, to find a common ancestor, because this is what will give you the amount of correlation between the trade space. So it's really two questions that, in a way, need to be uh, tackled uh, jointly. Okay, you cannot separate the two studies. 
Okay, and so the way we want to study those processes is by deriving scaling limits. So we want to rescale the population in some sense and prove convergence towards uh, an appropriate continuum object. Okay, so of course we are not the first one to ask those questions, and there is a huge literature on scaling limits of trees uh, in branching processes. So I'm not trying to be exhaustive here, but just what I want to, to illustrate is that for the three examples that I have given, there is already a wealth of results, uh, mostly providing actually uh, the convergence of the entire tree, okay? But there are also a few results due to Popovich and Popovich and Rivas, which try to give the convergence of the genealogy, which is slightly different from the whole tree. Okay, and so why am I showing you all of those references? It's to say that there is a shared feature uh, among all of them, which is that actually they rely on the technology which is known as contour processes and height processes. Okay, and this is basically saying that you will encode your tree as an excursion and you will carry out the convergence step within the space of excursions and then pull back the results into the space of trees. Okay, but in order to be able to do that, you need to, you need to have nice properties of the height function and the contour processes. And even if you consider a multi-type Galton-Watson process, this starts to be really involved, actually. And so what we thought with Manuel is that in the most general case, which actually arises quite frequently in application, when you have a, a very strong dependence between your type and the number of offspring that you leave, then we think that maybe those height and contour processes are not the, the best option to deal with convergence of trees because they, they won't have very nice properties. And so what we want to try today is actually to present a different approach, which is not relying on those um, high processes, but which relies on other tools, which are already existing tools, so it's not new, and which are known as spinal decompositions. Okay, and so there, are, there is going to be two main building blocks to our approach. So the first one is that we need a topology in which to discuss this question of convergence. And we will make a different choice uh, than the choice for, for uh, contour processes, which is to work with what is known as a Gromov-Wick topology. And the specificity of this topology is that um, you can define a notion of a moment of a random tree, and convergence in distribution can be reduced to convergence in, in terms of the moments. And I'm, gonna I'm going to define all of those terms. And then the second building block is what is known as a many to shoot formula or spinal decomposition. And this is actually another set of techniques that comes from the branching world and which actually allows you to compute extremely efficiently the moments of the branching processes. And so combined together, this provides this framework that you need to compute moments, you compute them with um, spinal decompositions, and then you are able actually to prove convergence of the whole tree structure. Okay, and if I have enough time, I, I'll be talking, I'll be giving a first very simple example, which is the convergence of the multi-type branching process. Okay, so first of all, I need to, to set up the, the scene and define uh, the a suitable state space in which to prove our results. Okay, and so I'm gonna use the formalism of Graven and collaborator of the Gromov-Wick topology. Um, so first of all, uh, the genealogy is usually encoded as a metric, okay? And more specifically, it's going to be what is known as an ultrametric. And so I'm going to call, I'm going to call uh, a metric space an ultrametric space if the distance fulfills this reinforced triangular inequality. Okay, so it's very uh, obscure in this definition, but there is a typical way of generating an ultrametric space, which is the following. So we start from a given tree that I denote by T, which has a root rho and the graph distance dt. And now you are going to fix some small t, a distance small t, and you are going to look at the set of vertices that lie within this at distance exactly t from the root, okay? And then it's not very hard to prove that the space u equipped with the tree distance is actually an ultrametric space. And I was saying that this construction is typical because up to allowing for continuous trees, okay, what are known as real trees, all ultrametric spaces can actually be obtained as the sphere of some rooted real tree. Okay, so th that's how you should be seeing an ultrametric space. And so the connection with the genealogy is that in application, this root row is typically the ancestor of the population and distance from the root is time. Okay, and so when you look at the sphere of your tree, what you are really looking at is the set of individuals alive at some given time. Okay, and so you are really looking at uh, the tree structure uh, induced by uh, the set of individuals at a given generation. 
Okay, so that's for the genealogy is going to be encoded as an ultra entry space, but we also need to record uh, the, the types in the population. And we are going to use a device which was developed in this paper by Depa Schmidt, Graven, and Fafelber, and we will uh, actually encode the population as a marked ultra entry space. And so what we do is that we add to a separable ultra entry space a finite measure on the set of labels in the population and on the set of types. Okay, so let me provide the first example of a marked ultra entry space. So recall that our process was defined as a random tree with a collection of traits. And so now we are going to define T sub n as the set of individuals that are alive at generation n. Okay, and so we undo this uh, set with the tree distance. And since all individuals live at the same generation, the tree distance is nothing but the number of generations that you need to go back before finding a common ancestor. Okay, and this is what this notation means here. Okay, so this is just the genealogical distance on Tn. And lastly, we will define the measure mu n to be a, a discrete measure. And what we do is that for each individual alive at generation n, we add a point mass whose first atom is located at the label of the individual, and the second atom is located at the type of the individual. Okay, and, and here you see why we need a, a measure on the, the product space, because if we had forgotten about this first uh, label here, we would have no way to match the atoms of the measure to the points in the alternative space. So we need this little device of having a measure on the joint space. Okay, and so our basic object today is going to be this triple TNDT mu n, which is the marked alternative space, and which encodes all the information of the population at generation n. And so now we want to define, to derive a scaling limit for this object. Okay, and so I'm going to give a second example of an ultra metric space, which now comes from the continuous world. And this is what is known as the Brownian coalescent point process. And so I'm showing it to you because this is going to be actually, it's going to act as the universal scaling limit of branching processes that have finite variance. Okay, so it's going to be the, the kind of object that we expect to see in the limits. So the construction starts from a Poisson point process on R plus times R plus with this given intensity here. And from this point process, we can define a distance, but this is better defined with a picture. So what I've shown here is actually a vertical line for each atom of the point process. Okay, and so the, the atom is sitting at the tip of the vertical line. Okay, so the atoms correspond to the tip of the lines. And first I'm going to define Y to be the first time when there is an atom which exceeds the level one. Okay, so this is just an exponential random variable. And now if I want to know the distance between two points uh, on the interval zero y, for instance, y and z, well, I define the distance to be the height of the largest tooth in between point y and point z. Okay, that's how we define, uh, and this is called somewhat a comb construction, and that's how we define the, the Brownian coalescent point process and the distance dp. Okay, and so I was telling you that there is a connection with the trees, and actually we can very easily draw a tree from this picture, and this is the tree that corresponds from to the distance. And very, um, very briefly, it's obtained by throwing a narrow for each atom towards the left and stopping it at the first vert vertical line that it hits. Okay, and so this defines the second alternative space, which is known as the Brunian CPP, and which is just the interval zero y endowed with this uh, distance and with the Lebesgue measure. Okay, and I, I'm telling you this is some sort of the universal scaling limit for genealogies of branching processes. Okay, so now we want to prove convergence of a discrete system towards this, to this kind of, of object. So we need a, a good notion of a topology. And again, we're going to follow the, the work by all of these people on the Gromophic topology, and we're going to define a polynomial as a functional on the space of, of trees of the following form. So what we do is that we integrate over all k tuples in the population, okay? And for each k tuple of individuals, uh, I, there should be a times e here, sorry, it's u times e. And for each uh, k tuple of individuals, we look at the functional of the pairwise distances between the individuals and of the types. Okay, and we do that for any k and for any continuous bounded phi. And now very simply, we're going to define the marked homomorphic topology as the smallest topology, which makes all of those polynomials continuous. Okay, that's just uh, a, a definition. Okay, I'm just gonna say in a minute what it means. And uh, very naturally, we define what we call a moment of a random uh, marked geometry space as the expectation of a polynomial. Okay, and you see that as we have defined the homomorphic topology starting from the polynomial, 
we actually have a lot of information about the tree which is contained within those polynomials. And actually, the very nice feature of the Margromorphic topology is that we can prove convergence and distribution in much the same way as you would do using the method of moments for random real variables. And so I'm just going to recall what this means. Um, so if you have now a sequence of real random variables, xn, and you're able to prove that for any k, the moment of order k is converging towards some limit. And if you can show also that the limit fulfills some growth condition, okay, the moments are not getting are not going too fast, then you know that there exists some limiting random variable to which the sequence is converging. Okay, that's what we call the method of moments. And now we are going to work in much the same way uh, for random trees. Okay, and so here is a formal statement. So now if you have a sequence of random Markle term trick spaces, and you can find a limiting one such that for any polynomial, the corresponding moment is converging towards the moment of the limit, okay, first. And also if the limit fulfills some growth condition, okay, and so this growth condition is only on the population size. Okay, this is the random population size, and it tells you that the moments of the population size should not be growing too fast. Okay, then if you, if you can fulfill those two conditions, then you have proved convergence in the Gromaffic topology in distribution. Okay, so you see that you can really, really much act as if uh, you were working with the method of moments, and now everything boils down to understanding these things which are just reals. Okay, so you can really reduce the, the convergence of, the, of a whole metric space to the convergence of some sequences of reals. Okay, and I'm just going to make a side remark to advertise some of our earlier work with Amory Lambert and uh, Emmanuel Scherzer, which is that there is a big difference between this result and the previous one, which is that here you see that convergence of the moments provide existence of the limit. Whereas in this result, you need to identify the limit a priori. Okay, and this is in this sense due to the fact that we have assumed that we restrict ourselves to separable ultra metric spaces. And actually, there is some sort of lack of compactness of separable ultra metric spaces in the sense that you can find a sequence of such spaces which start to look more and more like a, a non-separable ultra metric space. And this is why you cannot have a priori existence of the limit. And it turns out that in some, some previous work with Emmanuel and Amory Lambert, we, we actually designed some way of representing what a non-separable ultra metric space is, okay? And up to allowing, well, up to extending the space to account for, for these spaces, you can actually provide some sort of a reinforced version of the method of moments, which is the following. So now you are in the same setup, but you only know that the moments are converging. You don't know the limits. And you also have a growth condition, uh, the same growth condition. Then you know that there exists a random marked term trick space, which this time is possibly non-separable, such that the sequence it, is converging to it in distribution. OK, and so here I've just changed the notation because it's not easy to give sense to what is a non-separable term trick space. And there is uh, some measure theory involved, but I don't want to go into the details. But just you can have a, a much more uh, similar version of the method of moments, uh, much more similar to the real one. OK, anyway, what you, what you need to, to, to recall to, from that is that if you want to prove convergence in the Gromorphic topology, then you only need to prove convergence of some moments. OK, and so now let's see. Can we actually compute those moments? And so I'm going to start with the second example, which is the Brunel CPP, because in that case, we can actually compute the moment. So here I've just given uh, the expression of the moment in the context of the Brunel CPP. So you integrate over all k tuples of individuals on zero y, and you look at a functional of their pairwise distances. And I'm going to multiply and divide by the case moment of y. And now on the right, you recognize the distribution of the, the pairwise distances of k individuals sampled uniformly from the population. But in order to obtain this expression, you need to bias the population by its case moment. Okay, and so now up to replacing y by its case, uh, by its case bias, okay, which is what I denote by y star, we obtain this expression. Okay, and y star is nothing but gamma k plus one random variable. Okay, so the expectation, the polynomial of, of the Brennan CPP is just factorial k times um, what you obtain by sampling k individuals from a, a, a brilliant CPP constructed from a gamma distribution instead of an exponential one. Okay, so going back to the picture of the brilliant CPP, we do the same construction except that now we have uh, a gamma k plus one random variable. So now we need to understand what, what happens when we sample k points uniformly from this picture, okay? And 
now it's a very well-known computation that if you if you divide gamma k plus one interval into k plus one sub intervals, then they are all independent and exponentially distributed. And actually, we know that each of the sub intervals is independent and exponentially distributed. So the picture is that in between two consecutive points, we have an independent um, realization of a Brunian CPP. And now if you recall that the distance between two points is nothing but the largest tooth between those two points, you see that the distance, for instance, between this point and this point is just the maximum of the largest tooth of two independent Brunian CPPs. And it turns out that a little computation shows that the largest tooth of a Brunian CPP is a uni uniform random variable. And so this leads to a very nice characterization of the moments of the Brunian CPP, which is that you have a factorial k coming from the size biasing, and then you just take a function of this h, you have, you have to take a uniform permutation because you have ordered the point, but that's not a big deal. And then you just have to take h i j, which is just the maximum of uh, those uniform random variables. Okay, just remind that we can compute very explicitly what the moment of the Brennan CPP is. Okay, now that we know the limit, we know that we have to prove convergence of the moment to this expression. So now what about the moment of the discrete system? Okay, so I'm recalling the expression of the moment. So now we have a discrete space. So your integral becomes a sum and the moment is just obtained by summing over all k tuples of individuals alive at generation n and taking a functional of the distance and the marks. Okay, and so actually it turns out that it's more convenient to work with factorial moments. Okay, so we are going to impose that individuals must be different, but it makes, it makes absolutely no difference to the theory. It's just more convenient. And so we are going to make the same trick as for the Brunian CPP to multiply and divide by the, the case moment of the population size to obtain this expression. Okay, what we do is that we take, so SK is just, we take K individuals in the population at generation N, and we look at the subtree spanned by those K individuals. And if we want to do that, we have to multiply by the case moment of the population size. So that's the expression of the moment. But now, how do we prove convergence of that towards the moments of the Brunian CPP? Well, that's a priori hard problem, okay? And that's where comes into play the second set of tools that I want to mention, which are those mini to few and spinal decomposition. So now it's a completely different story. We're just in the branching world and the idea is that we will actually make a random change of measure. Okay, so we don't know how to compute SK under the original measure E. So what we do is that we will introduce a new measure that I denote by QXN, such that it, under this measure, the tree SK is very easy, okay? But by doing that, of course, you have a bias, which is just the Radon-Nicodym derivative of the one measure with respect to the other, and that I denote by delta K. And now the objective of the game is to find the right balance between having a very simple expression for delta k, which remains tractable, and having a very simple expression for the distribution of sk. And this is where there is some kind of magic going on, which is uh, those many to few uh, formulas. In the world of branching processes, you can actually do that very efficiently. Okay, and so these ideas were, uh, to the best of my knowledge, first formalized in a paper by uh, Matt, Har Matt Roberts and Simon Harris. And they define QXN as a martingale change of measure of the original measure. But with Manuel, we think that actually this is not well suited if you want to study a critical case. It's well suited for the supercritical case. And so another contribution of our work is that we have somewhat given a different flavor of those uh, multiple spine decompositions. Okay, and so just this kind of identity, that's what we call a many to few formula. And this measure Q is what we call usually the, the spinal measure. Okay, and so now I'm just going to describe you um, what's, what is our construction of the measure QXN. Okay, so in the world of spinal decomposition, everything always starts with finding a, a convenient harmonic function. Okay, so a harmonic function is just a right eigenfunction for the reproduction measure, and if you want to have a more probabilistic description of it, it amounts to fi finding a martingale of the following form, okay, which is called an additive martingale in the branching world. Usually we have, a, we have that harmonic function at hand. I mean, it's like the first step towards uh, studying the process. Okay, and so starting from this uh, harmonic function, we can make some sort of a dub harmonic transform of the reproduction measure. Okay, so it, it's a very explicit expression um, which allows us to define a Markov chain on E that we call the spine process. And this is a very important uh, process that contains a lot of information about the branching process. 
And uh, okay, so for instance, for those of you who have already done a little bit of branching, this is typically the process that arises in those many to one formulas. Okay, so it's just a H transform of, of the original measure. Okay, so um, now how do we define from this spine process the measure Q? Okay, so recall that we need to define a measure on a tree with K leaves. That's, that was originally the trees uh, obtained by sampling K individuals from the population with marks. Okay, so let me start with the tree structure. So we are going to choose for the tree structure a discrete version of the CPP construction that I was telling you in the continuous case. So what we do is that we take uh, an IID sequence with values in 1n, and we define a metric on 1k uh, through the following formula, which is the analogous of the formula for the continuous Brennan CPP. And so in the picture, what we do is that uh, we construct the tree recursively, and at the k step, we add a branch with IID branch length, and we attach it to its rightmost neighbor to its left. Okay, it gives this kind of picture. So it's a very simple tree. Okay, so now we need to assign types on this tree. And what we do is that we will start at the top of the tree with uh, a, a, an individual with type X, okay, which is the, the type of the ancestor. And we are going to run the spinal Markov chain along the branches of the tree. And at each branch point, we are going to duplicate the spine and just run to independent copies of the spinal process. Okay, and so here I've just put an exclamation mark to mean that this is not quite correct in the most general case. You have to use some palm measures, but this is going to be sufficient for my point here. Okay, it's, it's still a very simple process. Okay, so very simple definition. What's, what's the major cue? You throw a CPP and you run the spine process along the branches of the CPP. So it's not a big deal. But of course, by doing that, you have introduced a bias. And the bias has a very explicit expression, which is the following one. So it might look ugly at first sight, but I'm just going to explain the term one by one. So first you have a constant term here that I've put apart, which is just a renormalization constant. And then you have two parts uh, which are products. So the first one is a product over the branch points in the tree, okay? And for each branch point in the tree, you have to multiply by some factor, which in some sense is the moment of order D of uh, your reproduction measure, where here, sorry, D is the degree of your uh, tree. Okay, so D is always larger than two. And then you have a product over the leaves of the tree and you just multiply by one over the harmonic function. Okay, and so maybe to give a bit more intuition about this term, so note that in the previous construction, there is no interaction between the tree structure and the type. The, the, the tree structure is the same regardless of the types running along the branches. Whereas we know that in the real uh, branching process, some types are more successful than others. And this means that we are more likely to see a successful type at a branch point. And this coupling between the tree and the type is typically made by this, by this uh, biasing term because we give a, an award to those uh, trees that have a, a very successful type at the branch points. Okay, so that's, okay, that's just a definition of our um, bias and Emmanuel will give you some examples to show that we can actually compute things uh, using this definition. Okay, so, now I want to finish the talk by giving a, a simple application. And so like there is a short way and a longer way. So maybe Adrian, how much time do I have left? I think I'm fine. 15 minutes? Okay, oh, yeah, okay. So I, I just go for the long way, which is uh, the multi-type branching processes. Otherwise I was just going to go do single type, but this, there is no type, so there is no harmonic function. So we, we see less what's going on. Okay, so from now on, okay. From now on, I'm just working with a multi-type branching process. So this means that I'm assuming that the state space E is finite. So very simple, okay? And so it means that I can write the reproduction measure as in the following form. So what I do is that an individual with type X will have some, chi some children of type Y, and I denote by L X Y the number of individuals of a parent, sorry, the number of children of a parent of type X, that have type Y, okay? So my model is parameterized by an array LXY for all of the XY in the, in the population that gives you the, this number of, of children. Okay, and so a very important uh, notion in, in multi-type branching processes is uh, that of the mean reproduction matrix. And so it's just a matrix, a non-negative matrix obtained by, by taking the expectation of the number of children, okay? 
And so a very classical assumption uh, on those processes is that you have some regularity on the matrix, and namely that your matrix is irreducible and aperiodic. Okay. And this is just the assumption that you need to apply the perron frobenius theorem okay, to make sure that uh, somewhat your process is ergodic in a sense. And this means that you can find first a leading eigenvalue that I'm going to denote by lambda. Okay, and I'm going to be interested in the case when lambda is equal to one, which is the critical case. And then you can find a left eigenvector, which will act as a stationary measure for your process. And you can also find a right eigenvector, which is actually a harmonic function for your process. Okay, and we will normalize things so that uh, this integral is equal to one. Okay, so now we assume that lambda is equal to one. And so the result that I want to prove is the following. So first we make some moment assumption on uh, the offspring law. So we assume that the offspring have moments of all orders. Okay, and this is not optimal. For, for the result to hold, we only need a moment up to order, a moment two, sorry. We don't need higher order moments, but this is going to make my life much easier, but we, have, we can prove the optimal results with this kind of, of techniques also. But it's more technical. Okay, and so now the result is that you start your process from any initial condition and you condition it on survival at some large generation n. And what you do is that you rescale all distances by n and you rescale the total population size by n also. Okay. And then you can prove that this marked ultra matrix space converges in the Markov-Morphic topology towards this limit. And this limit is nothing but the Brownian CPP for the tree structure with a factor for the total mass, which is given by sigma over two, which is related to, to the second moment. It acts as the variance of the process in some way. And for the marks, what you have, the, the fact that you have a product measure here means that you have some sort of a propagation of chaos, meaning that your types are IID and do not depend on uh, the tree structure. Okay, so your types at the leaves are IID with distributed according to mu. Okay, that's the result that I want to prove. Okay, for those of you who are, uh, it's just a, a Yaglom law for, for the, the branching process. Okay, so how do we prove this result? So I'm going to apply the two steps that I was mentioning. So first of all, we know from all of the work of Graven, Depeschmidt, Winter, and, uh, and Fafedover that all what we need to do is to compute the moments of our population conditional and survival. Okay, and this is going to make uh, pop out uh, one over n to the k due to the rescaling of the population size. And then you have, have just the moment, it's just this expression. So now, now we're looking at moments, not uh, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, it's factorial moments. Yeah, it's a factorial moment, sorry. Uh, we should put this UI yeah, this should be different. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sorry. Yeah, I have not mentioned it. Uh, it really makes no difference because like it's it's linear combination one another and like the population size gets large so it's yeah but thank you um so now you can apply this many to few formula and of course you have a, a one over the probability of survival which pops out due to the conditioning and then you and i'm going to distribute this one over n to the k as a n in front of the survival probability and then n to the k minus one in front of the the spinal measure and so recall that this was our spinal measure and that we have a bias due to the fact that we have changed the measure. Okay, so now let me take care of the tree structure. So recall that the distance under the measure Q is given by this CPP construction where you have IID H, HI to HJ minus one. And we're going to assume that the branch lengths are uniform on one end. And so uh, almost trivially, this means that this quantity is going to converge to the same quantity but with those variables replaced by uniform random variables on zero one, okay? And so if you remember the computation from the Brownian CPP, this was exactly the expression that we had for the Brownian CPP. And so the convergence of the tree structure is very simple. There is nothing more. And I want to make two remarks. In the limit, the tree is binary, okay? Because all of those variables are almost surely distinct, okay? So you cannot have multifurcation in the tree in the limit. And also the distance between any two branch points is going to be of the order of n. Okay, you have no accumulation of branch points on a scale lower than n. And this will mean that the spine has a lot of time to mix, actually. Okay, so now let me take care of the bias. So first, uh, the perron frobenius uh, hypothesis that I made, you can translate it into uh, properties of the spinal process. And it means actually that your spinal process is ergodic, okay? And its stationary distribution is h time pi, 
And regardless of the initial condition, it's going to converge towards this stationary distribution. Okay, so now record the expression for the bias. So there is an n to the k minus one term that exactly compensates the one over n to the k that I have uh, in, the, in the rescaling, okay? Now I had some h of x time factorial k that I won't touch. And now I had a product over the branch points. But I know that in the limit, all branch points are binary. And so you have a binary tree with k leaves. This means that you have exactly k minus one branch point of order two. And so actually this product is going to converge to the same product, but with only uh, du is equal to two. Okay, to this term here. And also since we know that the spine that branch points, sorry, are, are spaced by, by uh, a length which is of the order of n. This means that the spine has a lot of time to mix and that what you see at each branch point is just the stationary measure of the spine. Okay, there is no correlation between the, the distribution of, of the, the, the marks at different branch points because it has time to mix. And the same phenomenon occurs at the leaves. The spine has time to mix, so the expression actually converges in distribution to this limit where you only have iid random variables distributed as h time pi. And so now going back to the full expression, this actually shows this following convergence. So this is just what you obtain by integrating uh, the, 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 the term uh, originating from the product over the branch points. And this is what you obtain from the leaves. And this is what you obtain from the tree structure. Okay. And all these variables are iid and distributed as pi. Okay, and so just very quickly, there is an h time pi, a one divided by h, so you obtain a pi in the, in the limits. Okay, and so to carry out this step, I need some uniform integrability on the term delta k, and this is where I need to use my assumption on the moments of my process. But if I don't have it, I just need to truncate the distribution and work a little more, and, and it works also. Okay. And uh, now the last step is like some exterior knowledge of, of the process, which is the Kolmogorov estimate for the survival probability. And we know from, from earlier work that the survival probability is of the order one over n, and the prefactor is given by, by this term here. And you see that this term here exactly, com exactly complements this one. So you get a k here, okay? And something to the k times factorial k, this is the, the case moment of an exponential random variable which is what you expect for the, the population size. This max of IID uniform random variable, this is the moment of uh, the Brownian CPP. And then you have independent uh, random variables distributed as pi. This gives you the part of the moments that the leaves are distributed as pi. And actually this completes the proof because this is the moment of the limit. Okay, so this shows the result in a quite, well, quite direct way through some computations uh, that were not that hard, we believe. Okay, so this was what I want to say, but okay. Okay, just wrapping up. So um, what I showed is that we have some kind of a new approach. So I don't want to say new because like spinal decomposition and gromorphic topology did exist before we worked on that. We just kind of put them together and made some tweaks so that they, they really match. Okay, so it's not entirely new. Um, but you can first use the gromorphic topology to work with moments and then just use spinal decomposition to compute the moments. And so it turns out that this, we have tried this approach uh, for quite a lot of processes that have some finite variance condition. Okay, so this includes this multi-type branching process, but more generally we think that it works for a more general process with some sort of an ergodic spine, which is well mixing. Um, also, there is going to be two more specific examples from population genetics in Emmanuel's talk. And uh, there is some recent work by Florin who is trying to, who is like applying this kind of ideas also for branching processes in random, in random environment. And so far it seems to work quite successfully in all of those uh, cases. And so what we want to do next with Emmanuel is of course extend all of these ideas to multiple mergers. Okay, what happens if you have no moment of order two? Everything breaks down because you cannot compute many to few, but we think that with the right truncation, we can actually still say something about the processes. And also mostly we have been focusing on, on critical processes because that's where the scaling limit is the most interesting. But there is a lot to say about subcritical and supercritical processes and we've not looked at that uh, anyway. Okay, so thank you for your attention and over to Emmanuel.